So how's it been, man? <laughs> uh, well, it's been. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first time we've actually communicated face to face, and not via like I, I Usenet think, posts I, I and think, things like that. I I think we may have talked on the phone once or twice. You know, twenty uh, yeah, years that, ago. That but uh, yeah, familiar. actually. Actually, sitting down and and uh, and, and and talking, uh, see, you know, seeing each other uh, on the yeah. screen there. Yeah. Uh, no, not. Uh, I I think this might be the first. In twenty something years. Twenty. See. MSN came out with Windows ninety five. Star Trek folders came. We were griping about Voyager. Yeah, so it would have been mid-90s mid It would have been 96-ish uh, when we started those forums on MSN back when it was still an MSN client and not just a web page. Yeah. Oh, heavens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a long time. 20-odd 20, 20 years, 30-odd pounds, two jobs, three kids uh, later... <laughs> Yeah, three kids for you, three kids for me. That's six kids total. Yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was you, you, you were already on the way. I mean, I'm, I'm a latecomer uh, to all this. I th think your youngest may be older than my oldest. Uh, She's yeah, twelve. My, yeah, my youngest is fourteen. I've got so, a, yeah, I've got a nineteen-year-old college freshman. So he's nineteen. Just turned nineteen. Oh my gosh. You remember when he was born? <laughs> I do. Yes, <laughs> I remember yeah. that announcement. Uh, yeah. Oh man. <laughs> okay, so I, uh, we're just so we're on the same page. We're both agreed that Voyager is still terrible. I detest Voyager. Yes. I mean, and it, I, I hate saying that because there there are a few episodes I actually kind of enjoyed, but uh, for the most part, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I gave up after the second season, and so I wouldn't even know if there were any good ones after that. I just kind of went, bleh. You want to know what's ironic? You, you've heard me rail and rail and rail about uh, about Brandon Braga. Because I was not a fan for a lot of years. Yeah. You want to know what's really, know what's really ironic about the episodes that I liked on Voyager? They were Braga's? They're his. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, they, they're his. I have a needle. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the, you know this like, I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. They're 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 they're, they're bits and pieces. I mean, there there are things about it that I, I I didn't hate, but they were so so inconsistent with characterization uh, you know one day Janeway is saving the prime directive one day she's wondering what the, how the heck you spell it well uh, I, that that was what ticked me off was the very first episode was a huge violation of the prime directive in the name of protecting the prime directive so we're not going to you know release ourselves from this whatever that thing was yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we're going to contaminate an entire quadrant of the galaxy uh, in the name of saving the prime directive and i could never recover from that particular bit of bad writing oh there, there's there, there's there's tons of it. it it was horrendous uh we're going to create a species that uh lives for nine years and the females can only reproduce once yeah. Why is this species not extinct? <laughs> well, it's a, point. It, it, it's, it, it's, it's a diminishing numbers game. Your population will always, always grow smaller. Yeah, unless you regularly produce tr twins and triplets. So, but yeah. They never, they never said anything about multiple Ocampa births. Um, yeah, you'd, you'd have to you'd have to produce litters to keep your population going. Yeah. All right, so what's your favorite trek? Uh, I'm, I'm still an original series guy of, of the new shows. Uh, once they started moving Rick Berman out of the way, I really dig Enterprise. I've, I've always, I've always enjoyed that. 
because you know you didn't have all the uber technology i i was really they got so abused the replicators and and uh and, and stuff of that nature uh i mean it, i'll be the first one to tell you enterprise had its problems it had lots of problems but a lot of those problems were named rick bergen and, and you know the aforementioned uh, brandon braga once they got those two out of the way and manny Cotto in, in place uh you know, Manny Cotto knew what he was doing, uh, and it was it, it was moving like gangbusters when they canceled it. Uh, and I th there, there's a lot of DS9 that I like. You know, once I you know, if, if I can just you know start the whole story, watch a little bit of the first episode, and then skip most of season one because, like most uh, Star Trek first seasons, it was dreadful. Uh, uh, it, it amazes me that tr the franchise existed as long as it did, uh, just based on Next Generation's first season. And they didn't—they they really didn't learn. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the uh, year of the Wesley saving the day, and yeah. then they brought in um, Doctor Pulas Pulaski for the second season. And I actually liked her, so of course they got rid of her immediately. I, I, I kind of liked her, uh, except for the part, you know, the, 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 the part that I didn't like was that she was so blatantly a McCoy ripoff. She, they, they, you know, it's like, we need you to be a, a acerbic and distrustful of technology and you, you've got to give Data a hard time every time uh, you turn around. And it just didn't work, you know. I mean, you, Diana Muldoor is a great actress, but I, I, I don't think that character had any business uh, as poorly developed as it was. And since we both write, we both know bad characters when we <laughs> see them. So it's like yeah, she was in, a better. In, 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 in case people are watching, us going. What's he talking about? She was great. It's like no, no, she was. Uh... She was still better than Crusher. Crusher yeah, which, Crusher was a non-entity. At least which Pulaski had some kind of personality. She she had some personality. I mean, the writers gave her that much. The, uh, what they did with Beverly was virtually criminal. Uh, I have to agree there. It was, that was that was pretty bad, which is unfortunate because. But again, Gates McFadden was not bad at what she did. She just wasn't given anything to do. Yeah. I mean, she was given less to do than, than uh, Will Wheaton was. And, you know, Will Wheaton had the same plot every time he was in an episode. Mm-hmm. Smart guy saves ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it was a bit annoying, but it was Trek. It was new Trek. Um, so I enjoyed it while it was on. I'm not a big fan of going back and watching more than a few episodes. It's it's hard to do that. I mean, there the first couple of, uh, I think it was one of the best episodes of any Trek. And they still had the round collars. They didn't have the the, the stand up collars yet, so it couldn't have been past season three. I can't remember. Uh, Measure of a man. That was one of the best episodes of any of the Trek series. I mean, that you know, seven hundred something episodes of, of of Trek out there. That one is uh, probably in my top five. Yeah. Uh, because you know it, it you know I, I know it had to have been at least second season because they were referring to Tasha Yar in this past tense. Uh. But the, the the first couple of seasons were just terrible. They had no idea what they were doing. They had, and I hate to say this, but they had Gene Roddenberry holding them back. He had a very specific vision, and he was in charge this time. Which you know, may or may not be a good thing. Yeah, it, it's kind of hard to say. But... Uh, it was it was just not uh, 
some of my favorite uh, favorite stuff. And like I say, it, it's unfortunate. They, 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 they just... It's not that they lost their way. I don't think they ever had it. It wasn't until after Gene passed away that they you know, really started uh, getting things together. He, you know, if he hadn't already died, he'd have had a heart attack watching Deep Space Nine. Yeah, I'm I'm a Deep Space Nine fanboy. Um, I just love it to death, uh, especially once they got Defiant and started developing the huge Dominion War arc. Uh, oh yeah, was... I, I, it, it's not my favorite, but I, I can I, I I have a huge amount of respect for because they had a lot more hits than they had misses. Uh, mm -hmm. Once they got that thing, once they got that thing rolling, I mean, uh, I think I think one of the best ones. Uh, oh, I forget the title. Uh, Jake is acting as a reporter, and they're getting shot down. It ends of him closing the cover on uh, his first novel. Uh, bibli uh, it had a biblical inspired title because I, I I love the fact that on Deep Space Nine they they, they got back to the, the the poetic kind of titles on a lot of the episodes, uh, and I know it wasn't let he who is without sin because that was where Worf goes to rise and it was one of the stupidest episodes I had ever seen. Uh, <laughs> That was one of the miss. That was one of the misses. But it was mm -hmm. it was in that same time frame. Uh, but I mean, it's, you know, the, the 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 development of the the characters on DS9 I thought was extraordinarily well done. Yeah, uh, there wasn't really anybody on that show that wasn't maybe the lounge singer that they brought in the last couple of seasons. The the holographic. Yeah, I don't singer, but from Captain Cisco all the way down to Jake, and even Nog, and you know. Well, when uh, you when you make me when you you're sitting there, and you you know by the time it's over, you're caring as much about Nog and Rom and Lita as you were about Jadzia, and uh, and Jake and Captain Cisco. Mm-hmm. Which, considering where those first three characters started, is saying something. I mean, you know, that is character development. Yeah. You know, Nog, you know, Nog loses a leg in one of the episodes, and it's like, oh God. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, are they planning on killing him? What's going? <laughs> Well, they they did, you know. Terry Farrell didn't want to re up for a seventh season, so they actually oh, killed they off axed a, her, yeah. They, they, they killed a, killed a major character. That was. I, I wish they had done a, a somewhat better job of it. I thought the it, it seemed kind of rushed. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, there was... I, I, I just, I just felt, I felt she went out kind of like a chump, and I, I, I didn't think that was fair to Terry Farrell. You know, even if she did want to leave, I don't think it was fair to, you know, and, and she knew the character was was going to die. Uh, but I, I, I think the writing kind of shortchanged her in that one, although it did give Worf and Martok some great scenes in the next season. Yeah, I think. I think it established just how nasty. Um, uh, Ari Ducat. forgot Ducats was. I mean, that's that. It was a setup for this guy is a really he he really he, he is he is really person. gone. Yeah. yeah, he he is really gone. They 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 tried a redemption thing with him, and that you know, and uh, but yeah. Like I say, I, I, I keep going back to Enterprise, especially the last couple of seasons. I'm one of the only people I know who enjoyed the uh, the third season. Uh, and I, re I I thought the fourth was brilliant. I thought it was fourth was a great build up to where things were actually going to be going. It's like, oh wow, 
they actually made the birth of the Federation interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and honestly, the numbers weren't any worse than Voyager's fourth season or, uh, or, 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 you know, Next Generations. I don't think they were as good as, as DS9's fourth season. That's when DS9 really started hitting its stride was end of the third, end of the f- and end of the fourth. Right. Yeah, I missed I missed Enterprise when it was running. That was the time of three young kids, and I just wasn't yeah. watching much of anything. Um, and I've never gone back and picked up on it, but I think I probably should based on, on what you're saying about it. I see. It, it is not without its flaws, uh, and, and, but I see most of the flaws are, uh, to me, it was, it, it was uh, Rick and Brandon second-guessing what they were trying to do because they kept showing, uh, they, they, you know, DNX-01 uh, en- encounters an alien ship uh, that has holodeck technology, and it's like, oh, ooh, ah, wouldn't it be neat if we had that, ooh, ah. And, uh, there, you know, they, you know, some other, uh, place they encounter has replicators. Uh, and it was like, don't you guys miss all this cool stuff that we had on, you know, on, on the, uh, the 24th century series? Which made you sit there and ask yourself, why did you do this in the first place? Yeah. But you turn around and there's some there, 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 there's some real good characters on there. There's, there's some lame, uh, but they they get better. There are issues with you know uh, one of the characters uh, to Paul. And I, I, you know, I, I had issues with how they portrayed the Vulcans in the first couple of seasons because they wanted to, you know, they, they're trying to go for something. Uh, but again, I'm not sure what. One of the things that Manny Cotto did when they got started working on the fourth season and really started ramping things up to, because, you know, cause, you know they, they fully expected to go another couple of years. And when he really started ramping things up was to kind of show what was going on with the Vulcans and, you know, you know fix, you know, his, his mission was kind of fix some of the issues that had uh, cropped up. Uh, I don't, I, I don't think it will replace DS9 as your favorite, but uh, I, the one of the reasons I liked it as much as I did was because of the, uh, because of the more primitive. I didn't like, you know, the technology solving everything that was, was happening in uh, the 24th century series. Yeah, uh, the, the, the infamous Trekno babble, you just spew out a bunch of nonsense words and, hey, problem solved. And, and <laughs> hey, we're going to shoot, you know. Yeah. We're going to shoot something out of the deflector dish and, uh, and, and, and things like that. Uh, it, it was, you know, it was more about the people. Uh, But uh, I, you know, I, I like the characters. I, you know, some of the as it went along, they started picking up on the actors' strengths more. Uh, but you know, it, it comes right down to the fact that what confounds me is this was their, you know, this is the fourth series uh, after the original. This is you know. It baffled me with with Voyager why it took them three seasons to get an idea of what they should have been doing. Yeah, but it took them three seasons to get an idea of what they should be doing, and it took a couple of seasons on uh, on Enterprise, and then they replaced the showrunner, uh, put put Manny in and, and started getting things back on track if they had gone on to a fifth and into at least a fifth season uh, I, I think it would, it would stand up there very strongly with uh, some of the other shows yeah 
Now, what uh, about the um, the reboot movies? Have you seen all of those? Because I've, only, I I've seen, only seen the first one. I have seen all three of those. I enjoyed the heck out of the first one. Uh, because I you know, it's, I knew it was something completely different. I had no problem with that, and they weren't fooling around. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought Chris Pine's Kirk was was wonderful. I mean, the 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 the, the scene that really nailed it for me, that you know, this was this was Jim Kirk. They've landed on the platform, and uh, they they've taken out the the Remans or the Romulans or whoever you know the the, the Romulans, uh, the bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> who, are, who, are, who, who are drilling a, who are drilling a hole in Vulcan? Uh, they, uh, you know, everything's going great guns. And Sulu, who doesn't have a parachute anymore, gets knocked off. He's plummeting to the earth. And Pines Kirk doesn't even think about it. He jumps off mm-hmm. to go save this guy he's been working with. Can't even really call him his friend at this point. They barely know each other. But that, to me, was quintessentially uh, Jim Kirk. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second one was horrendous. So much potential. Uh, but they couldn't come up with an original uh, story. We're going we're gonna to steal bits and pieces of Wrath of Khan, but not the good ones. <laughs> we're going to steal bits and pieces from. Uh, did you ever read uh, Diane Carey's novel Dreadnought? No. Okay. There, there, there are a lot of places where it's where where it's pretty good. There are places where it's really bad. But it is about the uh, Federation class dreadnought from the uh, the Franz Joseph technical manual. Mm-hmm. Only no, only nobody knew about it. It was being built completely in secret, sort of like the uh, like Peter Weller's ship in uh, in Into Darkness. You know, I, I uh, the you know throughout the the reboot movies, I I had issues with. Uh, transporting across the solar system. <laughs> we will beam into the ship orbiting Earth from Titan. <laughs> yeah, or beam into a ship that's at warp speed. You know, <laughs> I, I, I can even, I can even <laughs> forgive, I, I can even forgive that because, you know, it's like, someone clearly was having a good time. Mm-hmm. I mean that that was one that, that was one of the beauties of the the first movie. Uh, uh, two of the other beautiful things being uh, uh, Captain Pike, who I really yeah, you know, it's like wow. I hope they cast. I, I hope they come up with a reason to cast him as Pike in uh, in, in the second season of Discovery because they because they suddenly need a Captain Pike. Mm-hmm. He was brilliant. It's, it's like you know he's giving that speech in the bar. It's like your father was captain of a starship for eight minutes. I dare you to do better. And you believe him. Mm-hmm. I mean, you completely buy into uh, him as as this you know, decorated, inspiring captain. Uh, but I mean, I. I, I thought they did a lot of things right. I thought they did a lot of things wrong. I wasn't really wild about the ship being the size of the Death Star. And, uh, you know, I, I I didn't mind the fact that they bought everything from the Apple Store. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the only thing that I really enjoyed about the first movie and why I haven't watched two or three was Carl Urban's McCoy. He was oh. so dead yeah, on. It, it, what, it yeah, like, I mean, it, it was re- it was really great of DeForest Kelly to come back from the dead, disguise <laughs> himself, and and you know go by another actor's name, wasn't yeah. it? Oh yeah, that was just oh, he, amazing. He nailed it. 
I, I, that, I mean, that that was breathtaking. He was phenomenal. I liked, you know, Zoe Saldana uh, as an Uhura who could do more than what they let Nichelle do. Mm-hmm. Um, not that I think, you know, that Nichelle couldn't have done it if it hadn't been 1966 and they had let her. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, that was what that was what always got me was they they didn't. Uh, they couldn't. I mean, there, there, there are things that they just couldn't do. I mean, I don't know that I'd have bought Majel Barrett as the, the, the first officer for more than, you know, the length of the cage. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice lady, wonderful lady. I've, I met her a couple of times before she passed away. She's a great, wonderful lady. Not the best actress in the world. Uh On the other hand, nobody else could have done like done Loxana Troy. Nobody yeah. on earth uh, could have played that part as effectively as she did. Uh, and when she moved over to DS9, you know, I, th- th- there are times I'm sitting there watching, well, maybe I'm judging her a little too harshly. Yeah, she had some great some great bits on that show. The, the, the thing that really made me sit up and, and make me think, maybe I am judging her too harshly. Um, uh, it, it was an early you know, second or third season episode, and I can't remember what's going on, but Loxana and Odo are trapped in turbo lift. I remember that episode, yeah. And Odo is nearing the point where he absolutely has to revert mm-hmm. to liquid uh, because of his physiology. And he's embarrassed to do it in front of this insane, you know, crazy Betazoid woman who uh, is continually making these advances at her, at him, excuse me. And uh, he's sitting here wondering what the hell he's going to do. And she hands him her wig. And he just looks at it dumbfounded. What is this? That's my hair. Everything about me is a mask. Mm -hmm. And she played that so, so beautifully. I mean, I'm sitting here watching the scene going, damn. (laughs) Uh, and, and he finally, you know, r- relents and lets her act as, you know, she holds out her dress to act as his bucket so that he can revert. Mm, and, yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and that, and that's one of those where I'm sitting there going, maybe I'm judging her a little too harshly, but, uh, I mean, she, you know, she wasn't Meryl Streep, but, uh, she, she was a nice lady. Um. Uh, Actually, nobody else could have played that character because you have to be able to pull off the gravitas and be ridiculous. And I, I, I don't think there's anybody they could have approached. Uh, and and I, I still don't understand. I mean, Eugene was still alive when she, you know the, her first few episodes on on Next Generation. I don't understand why he didn't give her, you know, more more room Mm -hmm. Uh, because you know Marina could have used the coaching she wound up you know doing things you know being fairly solid but she could have used some coaching and uh, they just didn't really give her anything to do which is really sad yeah you want to know who gave her something really awesome to do Joe Straczynski on Babylon 5. She played the one of the widows of uh, the Centauri Emperor. And she could see the future. And she was devastating. <laughs> you know, so you know, that, that it took 
the competing franchise to give her you know some room to flex her muscles kind of yeah upsetting kind of upsetting to me uh animated series canon or non-canon well that was back in the days of the uh I have it on DVD <laughs> yeah. 10 feet away from me. It's yeah. like, a... <laughs> well, I mean, the, you know, obviously I was born two days after Trek's premiere, so I wasn't exactly watching it uh, when it was on uh, ori the original runs. But uh, I grew up the local, I think it was a CBS affiliate, used to do Trekathons every once yeah. in a while. Seven, no, eight episodes of Trek back to back. From ele ooh, ooh, ooh. from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. on a Friday night into Saturday morning, so you stay up all night. You watch those. You go catch a you know hour of sleep or so, and you get up and watch Saturday morning cartoons, which included you know Star Trek the animated series. So, <laughs> you know, it's just complete overdose of Trek. Um, oh yeah, well yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. We're, we're both but, six years old when it started. Yeah, but uh, canon, yeah, I don't know. I, I I have I to tell know. you my 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 biggest objection to TAS uh, was the animation because I mean it was it was filmation as you know like you know maybe that far you know above a, a flip book uh, that you buy at the corner drugstore. You know, this, these were the days of Hong Kong Anna, Fooey and you know, <laughs> Hanna no, Barbera. No, 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 it it, it was it, it was it, it was you know this this was filmation. It was down below Hanna Barbera. Yeah. You know, the, 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 you know, this this was sub Scooby Doo animation, and I love Scooby Doo so, uh, but the animation was not good. The the animation in in, in Star Trek animated series was horrendous. But the writing, for the most part, I mean, there, there, there are times you're looking and going, what the heck were they thinking? Hey, let's give the world a 50-foot Spock. There was no uh, explanation ever why this cloned Spock had to be 50 feet tall. Or the, you know, the, the escapee from the, from the, uh, from the uh, eugenics wars. Uh, who cloned himself several times and was also 50 feet tall. No explanation why they had to be 50 feet tall. But uh, you look at an episode like Yesteryear, which had uh, you know, Kirk and Spock went through the Guardian forever because uh, apparently in the animated series, uh, they're just using this to randomly go and, and look at history and, you know, what could possibly go wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I think you and I have written enough gaming adventures to know, oh, plenty. Uh, in this case, Spock is erased from history. Comes back through with Kirk from their mission in the past, wherever that was, and they are met by an Andorian with inexplicably gray skin. They, you know, they retconned him to be what they call an Enar, which was a, or part Enar, which is a, a, an Andorian subspecies that they introduced in, uh, Enterprise. But um, to explain the gray skin as opposed to blue. So Spock has to go back in time because they, they discover looking through the records that Spock was killed at the age of seven on a, a Vulcan maturity test. So he has to go back in time and save himself. This episode deals with things like uh, parental interaction because Sarek is as much of a jerk in the animated series as he was in Journey to Babel. Mm -hmm. um, which is no, not a reflection on Mark Leonard. Uh, they just, you know, they, they wrote him as a jerk. He was a much better character in uh, Star Trek 3 and Star Trek 4. But, uh, you know, dealing with your, de dealing, you know, parental interactions, uh, peer pressure, Euthanasia. 
because in this uh, in, in this alternate timeline, uh, Spock's pet Salot has to be put down because mm -hmm. he, uh, he he leapt into action to save Spock from a uh as a La Macha, I think is what they call it. This big poisonous uh, scaly cat thing, which you know, uh, you know, could only come from a, a copper-based <laughs> uh, region of of, of space. Uh, but I mean, you know, you you you've, you're you're putting this on Saturday morning TV, asking a six or seven year old kid watching it to to deal with a six or seven year old kid on the screen making the decision to put his pet down with dignity. Mm -hmm. That's pretty That's pretty heady stuff for Saturday morning. Oh, yeah. Uh, a much of the writing on, on, on the animated series uh, was remarkable, remarkable uh, Star Trek. You know, just like the original series, they're not all gems, but I don't think any of them descended to Spock's brain. Uh, and you know, I, I I like the fact that on on their website they're starting to treat certain portions of uh, animated series as, as as a fit you know as, or at least you know existing. Yeah. Uh, Adosians, the three armed, three legged uh, navigator guy was an Adosian. The uh, Cations, the, the 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 cat people. Uh, so you know, it may not be canon, but uh, when I was writing some of the stuff for uh, the Star Trek Adventures game, uh, I, uh, I I incorporated some of that into a <laughs> yeah. Well, the you know in the seventies, the animated series gave them a lot of room to explore things that they simply could not do on live action TV because the effects were not there yet. Yeah. So, oh it, yeah, yeah. It just it gave and, it just opened everything up. I I I I I, I, I thought the writing was was extremely solid, uh, extremely solid Trek. Uh, like like I say, the animation was was, was it was not Disney and uh, you know uh, Mel Blanc era. Of Warner Brothers. No, oh, yeah, the, the, <laughs> that was still I, you know, I, I, that I, I, was still expensive to do. It was really expensive. I would, I would, <laughs> I, would, I, would I would love to see them do like they did with the original series and remaster it. You know, uh, just get you know get same voice tracks. You just you just take everything from the 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 original episodes and 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 give it good animation. You know, if I had a few million dollars, I'd pay for that. But <laughs> yeah. So you write primarily for RPGs. You've written yeah. stuff for Shadowrun. You've written stuff for Star Trek Adventures. Yeah. yeah that's that's that, 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 that's that's almost the entire my entire output at this well, point has been yeah al al almost all of it in Shadowrun. I mean, I've I've got. Yeah, you know, I've got an adventure out for for STA. I've got the uh, one of the character packs with the original series characters. I did the write-ups for them. Well, that must have been fun. Uh, really it was fun. It, 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 really dig it, into it was those fun. It was, it was fun and it was terrifying. I mean, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, you're dealing with some iconic characters there. You, it, it, it's like you know, you're seeing going. Now, these guys have been around for 50 years. And there are those of us who don't think it's ever really been done right in, in one of the games. You know, some of them have fared better than others, but the Decipher game only had the, 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 the Trinity. Mm -hmm. It only ever had Kirk's... Uh, the Decipher game only ever had Kirk, McCoy, and Spock written up. Scotty, Uhura, Sulu, none of them were ever officially written up. I, they, they were going to get to it eventually, but Decipher had so many behind-the-scenes problems... You know, not even pertaining to the license. Uh, it wasn't funny. Uh, so this is the first game in 25 years to have all eight. You know, uh, that that pack's got Kirk, Spock, McCoy, Scotty, Uhura, Sulu, Chekhov, and, and Nurse Chapel. Uh, 
and that's the first time in 25 years that all eight of those have been written up in the current uh, role-playing game. So no, there was no pressure at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, 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 I wasn't at all nervous about <laughs> uh, about doing this. I, uh, I am, I've been very blessed in that they've been very well received. So, uh, you know, that much is, uh, has been fun, and, and you know, I didn't. I, I wrote some stuff in the in the core rule book, but I didn't. You know, I, I didn't have anything to do with the rules. Right. Uh, except for play for playtesting, I, I wrote some fiction. I wrote the. Uh, it, it, it's basically a next generation game, uh, but the rules are, are are light enough and 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 narrative enough that you know, it, it the, the the rules themselves are pretty era agnostic. You you, you can play Enterprise as well, as easily as you can play uh, Deep Space Nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it's it, 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 at that point it's it's a GM narrator call on on setting the tone and, and, and figuring right. out what you want to do. So you know from the rules standpoint, it really wasn't that big a deal. But I, I wrote you know it, it's set. Uh, let's see, it's I want to say twenty three seventy one is the default starting year. Voyager has just taken off on its its mission. I think they've just been reported missing in the Badlands. Uh, we've encountered the Dominion. Uh, the Odyssey has been destroyed. You know, so th- you know, things are starting. You know, that, that's the starting point right. for uh, Star Trek Adventures. Uh, I wrote some of the historical stuff. I, I wrote the, the, the section on the 23rd century. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the rule book yet or not. No, I haven't. Uh, uh, the, there's a, there's a timeline with like little uh, little sidebars from various people's uh, points of view showing you know historical perspective. I, I wrote, for instance, uh, an entry from Edith Keeler's diary. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I wrote a bit about uh, Kirk writing to Will Decker after the constellation was destroyed. I I, I got to write. A, a thing about Richard Daystrom and the Daystrom Institute and how he went, you know, had, had this guy who you know was was this disgraced scientist at the end of this episode of, of original series had the, you know, we wind up naming a institute of higher learning after him. Right. I, I I got to address that. That was that was fun. That was not nearly the pressure that writing those eight <laughs> characters was. <laughs> that that was pressure. Uh, writing, you know, I, I, they haven't released the pack yet, but I also wrote up uh, the, the lead characters for Enterprise. That wasn't nearly as much pressure as, well, yeah. as, as, as getting Spock and and uh, and, and Sulu right. You know? Yeah. You know, and and uh, you know, having to, to to realize that they're, you know. What the heck does a communications officer actually do? Uh, well, she handles damage control. Okay, we, you know, we so you know, I, I wound up uh, uh, making who I thought very interesting, uh, a completely different approach to, to to a lot of different things. She was fun, but you know the the, the game itself was, was a lot of fun to write. Uh, write on, and I'm I, I'm hoping to write more in the future. Uh, if there are places where they need you know historical perspective, because I'm not as big a fan of the 24th century. As... Yeah. <laughs> but to be fair, they uh, they they do sprinkle all sorts of uh, original series art uh, through the the books that have been released so far, the the, the core book, and they've released. For pre-order, they've released uh, two of the supplements: the uh, the Beta Quadrant source book uh, and the Command Division uh, source book. Because it's a very Starfleet-centered game. I mean, that, you know, the, the they're they're going with the, the the show paradigm where everyone was basically Starfleet with the occasional outsider uh, thrown in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Uh, I was, I was uh, going somewhere with this, uh, but they've uh, released, but you know, scattered through all these books 
uh, you know, the, you know, the, the, the covers are all very 24th century, uh, you know, with, with, with the early Deep Space Nine, you know, mostly black uniforms with the, the colored shoulders that, that carried over to, to Voyager. But inside, you know, there's all sorts of, you know, I, they haven't done a whole lot with the movie eras. There, there, there are pictures here and there uh, with movie uh, uniforms. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, a lot of them are the the, the the red and gold and blue velour shirts, and you know, you know a, a ripped shirt for for Kirk. They've got. Uh, I'll, I'll have to find you some pictures, but I mean, yeah, the, the they 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 do uh, try to sprinkle that in and, and get some of the that flavor uh, in there, which I find very welcome. Mm 